آزادی بیان یعنی لون زیو فری سپیچ So it's a familiar thought that the speech of some people can silence the speech of others. And in a way, that's exactly what's happening when governments, for instance, uh, silence or censor certain speech speakers because they do it through government or legal speech. Another sort of more familiar example where the speech of some can silence the speech of others would be if you were in a room and someone was heckling. Uh, someone uh, was yelling and drowning out the speaker. There, you would have a silencing occur, occur that was uh, drowning out a speaker through speech itself. What I have in mind by silence is something a bit different, but it's got something in common with that. In order to understand it, you need to step back and think. Well, what is speech anyway? Because it's against that backdrop that you can understand what silence might be. If you think that speech is a matter of making meaningful noises, then anyone who is stopped from making meaningful noises is silenced. But if you think of speech as a power to perform certain speech acts, it's a, it's an ability to do things with words, then. Silence is a matter of being unable to do things with words. The kind of silencing I was concerned about, when women are silenced, is a very particular sort of silencing, of a speech power that is exceptionally important. What I have in mind is the power to perform the speech act of sexual consent and sexual refusal. I am of the view. Which many people share, and certainly many feminists are concerned about, that sexual violence is a very serious problem, and it's serious in part because it is so underreported. And so we have here a situation where a harm is being done to women of a systematic nature that is not being addressed. And I would say it's not only a harm; it's an aspect of injustice. Now. There are many, many explanations for this, but one thing that a philosopher can point out is that if, in certain situations, a woman is saying no, and that is not being recognised as a refusal, that is silence. That is a kind of silencing. It's the silencing of a speech act that is so important that either making it or not making it is the difference between. Something wonderful, consensual sex, and something terrible, namely rape. So it's a really important speech power. How could it be silenced? It could be silenced if women don't have the authority. Another possibility is that、um, the hearers are in the grip of rape myths. Women who say no don't mean no. So when a woman says no, she doesn't mean it. It's just part of a game. It's insincere. Besides, just like that, she was asking for it. So, what's coming out of her mouth? No, we've got to weigh up against what's coming、uh, through her clothes. She's dressed like that, so she's asking for it. So, this、um, issue about speech acts being silenced in sexual contexts is of massive importance. And of course, philosophers don't normally look at this sort of phenomenon. But anyone who is Um, concerned about equality for women should care about speech and speech acts that matter in this way, and how they can be silenced in ways that become visible when we see the point of speech, which is to perform certain speech acts, and especially in this context,、uh, important speech acts like consent and refusal. Free speech.